What do smart labs, virtual caves, and huddle walls all have in common? They are all part of Suffix vision for construction. The company takes a build smart approach to business and has introduced smart labs hoping to strike new concepts and ideas for the construction industry. I'm pleased to welcome Chris Meyer, Chief Innovation Officer of Suffolk Construction. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So Chris, let's talk about, you guys do something really unique. You guys have these smart labs. What does that mean for the construction industry? So we look at the uh, sudden burst of innovation that's happening across all the project sites and across the industry in general and recognize that uh, we needed an investment in innovation infrastructure to maintain an innovation mindset that allowed us to share, scale, and develop the most sophisticated solutions uh, to help push the, uh, the industry forward. So what was the creation behind these smart labs? Because I find it really unique to have these and to really start continuing to grow them. So we were looking for ways to disrupt the industry. So obviously uh, we and everyone else are looking to improve how we do things each and every single day. Uh, and while sustaining innovation and change is really important, we recognize that there is a more systemic change that's gonna happen in the industry and we wanna be a part of driving that. So we look at what the state of the possible is. We wanna bring teams together side by side with newer technologies and allow the kind of wisdom of the crowd and the, the intellect of the entire organization to help define what that future can look like for us and then make it a reality. So when you kind of want to disrupt the industry, it's kind of intriguing. What kind of technologies can you put in there to actually be so disruptive and unique in that way? So there's three main value drivers. There are there's the planning, the control, and the experience, which is what as general contractors we, uh, we tend to do. And we look at tools that are going to be analytic tools. We look at collaboration tools, and then we look at visualization tools. So we've put in place uh, in each of the smart labs so far with more coming online over really the next month, uh, huddle walls uh, and surface hubs uh, in order to be able to, uh, to work and collaborate both within teams and across the regions. We've got a, uh, an entire wall, which is our data wall, made up of uh, a three over three array of large displays to be able to tie information in from job sites as well as from analytics that we do. Uh, and then we have live job site feeds and information coming in directly from uh, our different locations. And so that's how we would look to, to bring some analytics uh, together. And then on the visualization side, we have a, a virtual reality cave and we have HMDs uh, using vibes in the in the uh, spaces as well. This sounds so great, Chris, because when you think of construction, you don't think of analytics. You think of the things that you're saying, virtual and design, that pops up. But analytics is really new in some ways to construction. How is that being accepted and embraced? Uh, actually, it's it's an organ. It's it's there's a real thirst in the organization for it right now. We look at innovation as being driven by data. That identifies where the opportunities are. It allows you to measure the value that gets created, and ultimately, then it helps drive the adoption of what those process changes are that innovation and change technologies or change processes are going to implement on the job site. So we sort of start with data. Uh, and are looking to whether it's uh, the key performance indicators, the monthly assessments that we do on all of our projects along uh, a variety of different metrics uh, that we share across the entire organization, or whether it's new ways to look at, uh, at information across various systems and moving into data analytics as really foundational for, for the whole change, uh, the whole change uh, mission that we're undertaking. Do you find that you can use these analytics ultimately, you know, our number one thing that we think about job sites and everything we're doing is to get information to, to be able to help our job sites be safer. Are you using these KPIs to do that besides the idea of collaborating and improving and getting jobs done faster, but also making them more safe? Yeah, absolutely. The three things that we look for all to, to, to drive are gonna be safety, quality, and then productivity. And so it's really in that order. And by bringing together information, whether it's captured from sensors or whether it's captured from uh, individuals or whether it's it's information that is uh, is, is dynamically uh, sourced from within the job sites, that can be pulled together and used to not only evaluate uh, the conditions on the site, but ultimately, and we're just beginning this now, to start to look and doing predictive analytics associated with safety so that we can look at situations which create higher risk 
and start to look at the factors that drive that so that we can step in front of that and start to uh, start to plan around uh, around those risks and look to look to improve safety. So so really, that is a key starting point for us. Out of that, obviously, quality and then ultimately productivity can be driven by a lot of the same process uh, and data collection sources that take place. Do you think you're going to go from the predictive analytics to more prescriptive analytics by being able to use this information that you're gathering from these hives that you have and, and kind of advancing to using really advanced technology, uh, conversational AI and all kinds of things at the job sites when you talk about sensors and things like that as well? Well, that, that, that's definitely where the industry is heading, right? If you think of the natural continuum from data to information to knowledge, we continue to move up that, uh, that curve of sophistication as you collect more information and put it in context. And so by capturing more information, regardless of what the sources are, pulling that together, we have a chief data officer and data scientist now that we've brought on board uh, as well, because we really look at, again, this idea of innovation being driven by the data, not only to, to point towards where it will be most effective, but to measure that value and make sure that everybody understands where the benefits come from, from these types of investments. So where do you think the big technology is going to be in the year ahead? I mean, you are clearly ahead of a lot of companies in looking at technology. Where do you see it headed? Well, I think you touched on it before. So I think on the leading edge for this year, we're really looking, and I think a lot of other folks too, on data capture, sensors, drones, other productivity measures, I think you're going to see an explosion. We'll continue to, we've already started to see, and we'll continue to see an explosion of ways in which information can be captured. I do think the analytics are going to be a big opportunity because we're going to be focusing on, as, as an industry, on measuring that value. Um, and then on collaboration and integration, really streamlining the work. If we look at the inefficiency that's inherent in the construction industry, there's there's obviously the longer term transformation and disruptive changes. There's also a lot of opportunity that sits in front of us by just doing a better job, integrating information, integrating workflows and providing better collaboration uh, across across uh, environments. And so I think we'll see that on the uh, uh, on really this this year's roadmap for us as we look out at the bleeding edge a little bit more. We look at the machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence, particularly in the areas of starting to understand schedule impact and where you are as you bring the model and the building coupled together with the data around the schedule and the cost, coupled with what the actual productivity looks like. That entire planning control process we see as having a real big, a real big opportunity, and I think we're going to see more, more intelligence, uh, machine intelligence come in to be able to support those. And along those lines, you'll start to move into predictive analytics. You'll start to move into prescriptive scheduling, and you'll start to ultimately look at at uh, ways to optimize uh, optimize these jobs um, as we go forward, leveraging the knowledge base across everything that we've done in the past in a much more consistent fashion. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. So that was Chris Meyer, Chief Innovation Officer of Suffolk Construction Company. I appreciate you joining us today for That's Someone You Should Know.